What's up? I'm back again with another video to spread awareness for mental health. Today's talk is simply going over 10 things we shouldn't say to people dealing with mental health disorders, whether it's depression, anxiety, PTSD, or bipolar disorder. Let's jump in. Number one, you look normal. I'm confident in person that has diabetes look like they're normally functioning as well. Just because you're not witnessing them having an episode, that doesn't mean anything at all. People can easily smile, but feel so down on the inside. Also, were they supposed to be acting crazy, sad as I don't know what or something? What does that mean? Mental health disorders do not have a look. Number two, everyone gets a little moody sometimes. That's true, but it's not the same as dealing with a mental health disorder. You can't characterize yourself to be bipolar or depressed just because you're feeling the emotions that every human being is supposed to be able to feel. Plus, it's one thing to just feel stressed out and depressed, but it's another to actually be dealing with depression, anxiety, or anything else. Saying this will make it seem normal and it also makes it seem like mental health disorders are not as serious as they are. You have to be able to tell if you're going through a mental health issue or not. Number three, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Now as harmless as this might seem, it is actually harmful. Trying to relate to someone's problems in some way is something that we all try to do. But when it comes to mental health disorders, unless you experience a mental health disorder yourself, you cannot say you know how they feel because you do not. Whether you believe it or not, you're belittling someone's el someone else's mental health disorder by the things you say. Don't say things like, girl, I was anxious when blah, blah, blah. Or I be acting bipolar all the time girl or when you just have mood swings like everyone else have number four don't war veterans only go through ptsd no anyone that has experienced a seriously traumatic event events is at ex exposure of dealing with ptsd some examples of this could be watching someone get killed a really bad car accident sexual assault and physical and or verbal abuse whether it was from your childhood or relationship it is not just a word thing now if anything veterans are at an increased risk of getting ptsd due to the violent nature of military service but it is not limited to vet veterans which reminds me thank you for your service number five what do you have to be depressed about or you have a good life. This is the moment where people decide not to talk about it and refuse to seek help. There are plenty of reasons why someone ends up having depression. There are celebrities that have a load, a load of money, which is supposed to be able to buy you happiness and they're doing what they love. So what could go wrong with that? Guess what? There are celebrities that are still dealing with mental health disorders. Also, to every parent that out here that might be guilty of saying the same thing, stop telling this to your kids because young people have the highest rate of depression. Fear of failure and coming of age is a huge thing for us. There's pressure, environmental circumstances, stress from college, and some of us honestly have, have unrealistic expect expectations for ourselves. When I say unrealistic, I mean by giving yourself more than you can handle and putting extreme pressure on yourself. I'm guilty as charge of this myself. Keep in mind that stress can eventually turn into a mental health disorder if you're not coping with it well. A way to be able to tell that you're dealing with something more serious <laughs> is if you're still exhibiting symptoms after the trigger of what stressed you out in the first place is over with. There's one last thing that we need to note that can mess with our self-esteem and mental health. Where's the random drum roll? Drum roll, please. Social media. Number six, snap out of it. Mental health issues wouldn't be a big deal if anybody could just snap out of their condition. People don't choose to be to have bipolar, anxiety, nor depression episodes. I mean, come on now, this comment is honestly unnecessary. Number seven, shouldn't you be over it by now? You could be possibly telling this to a person that has been sexually assaulted, raped, beaten, or lost a loved one. That's, that's something that you can't just get over. And certainly you can't just get over a mental health disorder that was most likely created by these traumatic events. That's what PTSD basically is. It's basically long-term trauma from a terrifying event that happened. You can't just get over it. It's difficult to move on from. Number eight, it could be worse. Is this a competition or something? <laughs> 
whatever that person may be going through may not be a big deal to you but that doesn't mean it's not a big deal to them it's about how their situation is making them feel and plus it's a mental disorder would you say this to anyone that's dealing with a physical illness or just anything someone breaks their arm oh well it could be worse who wants to even experience that pain that they're going through right now don't compare situations you're invalidating someone else's feelings by saying things like that by the way you're making them feel like they shouldn't get help all because their situation isn't big enough to, for them to seek help. Let me remind you of something. What happens when an illness goes untreated? It will get worse, no doubt about it. So don't manifest that. Number nine, you wouldn't feel this way if so now the condition is their fault. That's what you're basically saying. Yeah, you're definitely saying that. Just blame it on them. Lastly, number 10, try harder. It is not an easy battle and it is not a battle that's going to be won overnight. You need to learn to be patient with someone's recovery, especially if they're giving it all they got or else just go away. Go away because that impatience is something that no one needs. It's discouraging to know that people don't understand how hard it is to be affected by a mental health disorder. It's not a choice to go through this at all. Before I wrap this up, I have a special one to mention. I can't believe people even say this anyway. It must be the time of the month. I think you're just asking to be cussed out or just smacked or something because this is just offensive to women who aren't even dealing with a mental health disorder. Also, you need to be able to differentiate when a woman is just experiencing her, her, her cycle versus her dealing with the actual mental disorder. You also just need to know more about women, but that's a different conversation for a different time. <laughs> Well, that's a wrap on the things of what you shouldn't say to people that have with to people that have mental disorders. Don't say things that you wouldn't say to someone that's battling like cancer, diabetes, heart disease, etc., etc. Please be kind. As a matter of fact, here are some of the things that you can say. I'm really sorry you're going through this. Do you want to talk about it? Just know that I'm always going to be here for you regardless. You are not a burden. And plus, what could go wrong with I love you? Maybe you could just give that person a nice warm hug. Come back for another video next Tuesday. We will be talking about some of the myths concerning bipolar disorder. Until then, be kind, be safe, and love each other. Thanks for watching. Peace.